Welcome to Intune Training, the place to learn how to use Microsoft Intune, the Steve and Adam show. With no Adam, but whatever, we've come to we've come to get used to that. Uh, got a new MVP. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, so we've got Steve, uh, we've got uh, Nick Hogarth, who joined us in the last video, and we've got me, the intern. I don't have a name, I'm just the intern. Yes. Um, okay, so this is uh, the certificate series. Welcome back. Uh, you thought the punishment was over? It is not. We're still on certificates. So... Yeah. This is number two. But it's uh, going to be a quick one. Very quick. So the first video that you've just watched uh, was around how to uh, configure Endes and Skep and all that fun stuff. It's very painful. You've now hopefully gone through that process and you're now uh, in a position where you're like, okay, well, I just spent four hours of my life that I'll never get back. What am I doing with this certificate or with this, with this protocol that we've set up? So this is what we're going to do. So in this video, um, Steve is going to show us uh, how to uh, configure a policy to deploy two policies, uh, actually. two policies to deploy for Windows devices. So with that, Steve, please take over. Cool. I'm just going to quickly share my screen, obviously, so you can see what I'm doing. Otherwise, I've got to do some interpreting dancing uh, to uh, show you how I can uh, publish certificates. I would pay to watch that. Yeah, I, I, I was waiting for that. <laughs> Put it in the comments if you want to yeah. see. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> Donations will be accepted, and obviously it will, my address. it will <laughs> it will occur at MMS Steve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. if we get a stage and a session for uh, Intune training to do a live one. Exactly. There we cool. go. Anyway, let's jump into what we're going to talk about today, which is certificates. So, as I said at the top of the call, um, we're going to do two pro uh, two profiles or two policies. Um, first thing we need to do to set up our uh, demonstration is we need to have a computer that's got the certificates on there. So typically use your NDES server or your CA and export your certificate. So in our environment, it is the root certificate that we need to export, which is the Intune Training CA. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're going to export this. It doesn't matter if it is DIR or Base64. I like the Base64, so I'm gonna go Base64. Yeah. Um, let's put this into a logical location. Keep it safe. It's it's part of your trust environment. So while it's publicly available, if you've got it published externally, just keep it safe. Yeah, I mean these are, as I said in in the first certificates video, these are the keys to your environment. So treat them with the respect that they deserve. Correct. Um, so we've gone in. We're just going to put it into our downloads folder, and we've exported that out. Nice and simple. We have our our root certificate. Um, and that if you've got an intermediary or multiple certificate authorities in your environment, you need to export and import each of them individually. Mm -hmm. Super important that you do that. If you don't, you're going to have missing certificates in your chain. It will but not work. in our environment, we are one tier, so we only have to worry about a single certificate. So we now go to devices, and we're going to select Windows just so it limits our profiles mm -hmm. that we see. Uh, and we're going to go and create a configuration profile. I'm going to run through this really quickly because it's a quick process. Um, so we're going to go create profile. And we're going to select Windows 10 and later. Yes, it will work for Windows 11. And we're going to select templates. The reason why we're selecting templates is because we need to do certificates. And certificates don't exist in settings catalog. So down the bottom here, we're yes. going to look for trusted certificate. Mm -hmm. And we're going to go create. This one here, we're going to call it Win 10. Ooh, we're just going to call it Windows. Mm, yeah. No emojis in this one? Uh, definitely emojis. We have a naming right. convention and we stick to it. Yes. Yes, we we're, do. We're nothing if not professional. Padlock. You can get a padlock in there. <laughs> Ooh, that's a good one. That's a good yeah. idea. That's actually. why I'm on the show, guys. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> Chief emoji suggestion officer. I don't, I don't know if we're going to find it. Can you search? Don't you, yeah, don't you bring important. this up and type in padlock and it just magically works? Close close it and bring it search, back up. Search in the, like the far left. For everyone that lock. is watching this video, for like information on how to in, uh, enforce uh, certificates in their environment and they're stuck on three grown adults looking <laughs> at emojis, I'm not going to apologize. I'm not going to apologize either. This one's skiing. on me. For skiing is fine. Skiing is fine. Do the skiing one. Skiing? Skiing? Okay. Yeah, skiing is so now we've gone for a 10, 15-minute video to... 25. Okay, yeah. we can't do it. Do it again. <laughs> G 
you don't follow the naming convention that we've specifically set the up. The reason why it's not working is because it's not parsing the uh, uh, emoji into the remote session because it's not allowed to. Listen, you get one chance. Uh, I know. You got one opportunity. Is, yeah, this is your Bring one. Yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is your one pass on this. All right. So we've now got our certificate uh, profile. We're going to go here and we're going to select this uh, from our downloads directory where we saved it. Mm -hmm. Why downloads? Because that's where I chose to. Mm -hmm. um, we're then going to go to our destination store. This is super important. So you're always going to have a root certificate goes into the computer certificate store root. You'll note that there's not one for user because the user uses the root certificate store for the computer object because the user shouldn't be registering root certificates. Yeah. Only system admins should. Very important security feature. So we're going to go and register that into our root store, and I'm going to say root as much as I can. Um, and then from here, we're now going to add our group. Don't do all users and all devices as much as you really, really want to. Hey, this filtering. True, true. Um, let's see. We're going to select randomly intune.training users. I think that's all users anyway. Don't really care. Obviously, set your filter if you want to filter. We're going to go next. <laughs> We're not going to put any applicability rules. So this doesn't matter if you assign it to a user group or device group. No. No. So this. Get it. Yeah, this, so this comes down to the, the point of, and again, this could be a video in and of itself. Um, Silent, yeah. What's actually happening is, or it's the delivery uh, mechanism that you're you're identifying, right? So like if you, if you imagine it as like a pathway, it's hitting the user and then fanning out to the devices that that user is currently logged onto. Um, whereas if it was device, it's just hitting the device and applying to the device. So it yeah. gets there eventually. It doesn't really matter. Um, One thing that I will stress though, um, and I've run into this at one of my customers. It's it's an it's a quirk. It's not a mm -hmm. bug. It's a quirk. Um, if you're going to use this for Wi-Fi and VPN, make sure that it's deployed to the same group for all th policies. Yeah. Otherwise, it can cause some issues for some reason. Sure. Right. But it's being investigated, I believe. Okay. Cool. Um, so we now have our root certificate, and we had to create that first because we needed it to create. Uh, our next next process, which is the SCEP certificate. So we're going to go create profile. We're going to select Windows 10 and later. We're going to go templates again. And what you'll see here is we have three options where we talked about them previously being yep. PKCS, PKCS imported and SCEP. In our scenario, or in this scenario, we're talking about SCEP. So we're going to select the SCEP certificate. We're going to create that. We're going to give it a nice name of Windows dash uh, skep certificate. And I think I spelled it right. Yep, nailed Too bad it. if I didn't. <laughs> um, and this is where we then go and specify our configuration. So you have the option of doing it as either a user or a device. You can use the same certificate for both. Uh, from there, we can also put in any additional subject alternate name on top of what our subject name format's going to be. And you'll see that you've got the special characters of using curly brace, username, curly For brace. expansion, yeah. Um, email address. You can go and build that out here in your subject alternate name mm -hmm. using can the you, same scenarios. Can you do me a favor, Steve? Uh, yes. Put your mouse over the, the information for subject name format. Yep. And you'll see here if we go to click on that and it'll explain all of the options. <laughs> Does it show you all the uh, expandable variables? So. Wait, Steve, when you say you can use that for both, you mean you, we're using the same certificate template for either a user certificate profile or a device certificate profile. We'll need correct. two profiles, but we use that same certificate template. Yeah, that's, that's, correct. Clarify, yeah. that, that's good clarification. Yeah, okay, um, cool. So here's here's those expandable variables that you can use to obviously build this up. Yeah. Um, this is more important when you're getting down to the route of, okay, so we've deployed the certificate. Like if we've got if we've got services like Wi-Fi or you know things that require specific uh, information to be in that, this is where we're crafting that um, that subject name that will then correct. need to be imported into whatever uh, tool that you're using. And you'll see that there's separate ones for user certificate type, and then there'll be one here for device certificate type mm -hmm. as well. And you can step through that. So this is where why you would use this, as Ben alluded to, is uh, certain Wi-Fi authentication, 
um, some applications require it for trust. So it's yeah. it's just about building the trust in the certificate where you yeah. can expand upon not just saying, well, is it the username? Is it the UPN? No, it's it's also tied to this device or tied to this scenario. Yeah. And from my testing, if you have a hybrid Azure AD joint device, which we don't recommend, or an Azure AD joint device, those two on that tab, the device names, you need a different when you populate it. So you got the fully yeah. qualified domain name, that's for your domain join. Okay, your hybrid Azure AD join. Mm. Or your device name it can be for Azure because it's way with the computer renames yeah. and it does the um hybrid. So you probably will you will end up with a profile for Azure AD join device and then hybrid Azure AD join device. Yeah, yeah sure. Um, hybrid. Hybrid. Michael Neyhouse has a good blog post on that with all that info in there. Cool. Nice. We can chuck that in the comments. Definitely. Awesome. Uh, so now we've got our certificate. We're going here. We're stepping it through and building out our validity. So this can actually be equal to or less than what's on the template. So mm. on the template, it was five years. Here we're going to leave it at one. Um, and that's just going to make sure it keeps it up to date. Cool. Um, from a key KSP point of view, uh, I typically want to put it into my TPM, otherwise used software, yeah. uh, KSP. But in some organizations, you may want to explicitly say, fail otherwise if I can't get it into my TPM. No problem with that. No problem with any of these. It just it depends on your environment and how you need to configure it to access those keys. Mm -hmm. um, we now need to set our key usage. Uh, it's going to be both because we can. Mm -hmm. um, remember the bit size that we were talking about earlier. This is going to be 2048 uh, because it's 2 meg or 2K actually. Um, <laughs> The next part is the hash algorithm. Always SHA-2. SHA-1 is deprecated. Don't use it. Please don't use it. Please so update your CA. Otherwise, you can figure a lot more options in there than the PKCS. Yes. From look, just looking at it like the um, the key usage, key size, hash, all yeah, those yeah. options aren't applicable and well, don't exist in PKCS. Yeah. Um, the thing to note is a lot of this stuff, it, if the template doesn't have it, some of them will be um, will be uh, reflected. So like if your certificate val validation period is less, there are oh, sorry, longer than the template, you're going to run into issues yeah. down the track, not initially. Um, but the key usage, bit size, and hash algorithm, they'll check yeah, they that need to yeah, something. they need to match. It's just the yeah. one thing and, and this will come back to where we are later. Um, so we grabbed our root certificate, we're going to grab that. This part here is super important. You can put whatever you want here and it will still issue the certificate. But. But when you go and uh, use that certificate for your Wi-Fi or VPN, if they do not match what's on the actual certificate template, it will fail, it will fail period. And hey, Steve, why do you know that? Because I've had multiple environments where this has occurred. So I've I think, done it. <laughs> yeah, we've all done it. It's very, very important to point this out. And it's like we said this in the first video as well, like what you set up in those templates and, and everything there has to be copied across. So document what you're doing when you're doing it yep. so that you don't have to uh, rely on your memory because your memory will cheat you and yep. you will be in a world of pain. So what you'll see here is we have secure email, encrypted file system, client authentication, and any purpose. Any purpose yeah. If we go back over here, we have any, any purpose. purpose, client authentication, and secure email, but we don't have the encryption this? one, the encrypted encryption file system. system. Yeah. So what we need to do is we're going to go in here because we have access to it. Um, we're going to go to properties, and we're going to go to extensions, and we're going to edit. And we're going to go edit on that. And we're going to copy that number there. That object identifier is super important because it's what we use to check. And that's it there. So we're going to quickly paste that there. And we're going to go back over and we're going to see if we can copy that, which we can't. And we can't copy it there. Just that's type it. It should be fine. Oh, no, you can grab it from there. Yeah. Copying and pasting is always better in these scenarios because you're going to make sure it's correctly capitalized mm -hmm. and everything associated. Uh, so now we have our four extended key usage that are required. Uh, and then this is the, we talked about this earlier about the minimum five days. That's when it's going to refresh on the fourth day. Mm, cool. Make sure you have a longer period than five days 
Otherwise, you're going to have a ridiculous amount of certificates issued and revoked on your certificate of authority, and you're going to have to put in a maintenance plan. Otherwise, your certificate of authority will grind to a halt. Um, so scale it to what matches your environment. The last part that we're going to set is the link to your SCEP server, which is in our scenario an AAD app proxy. Because I didn't want to have to type it all out, I copied and pasted it into my crib notes. And so I'm that's going the public to yeah. that thing of the, um, the internal yeah. FTD. That's correct, yeah. And this is, again, this is the thing that if you watch the first video on this, um, we cannot get access to this now yeah. because it is locked down. So we go here. Yeah. Go here and paste Just. and go. So this will give us an authentication error. Oh, three forbidden. Yeah. We're not allowed to. But the SCEP policy is. So that's correct. Yeah, you know, this is this is how this works. So because it's saying you're not allowed to authenticate as anonymous, you have to sign in with a different account. Simple yeah. as that. So that's exactly what you're supposed to see. So we're all happy days and we go next. And we go next. And we're going to add the group being the Intune training users. Mm -hmm. And we're going to select that. We're going to hit next. No applicability rule. And we're going to hit. So next. Could you have React. multiple URLs in there before? Yes. You work with a customer with multiple Windows servers. Yep. You would go in there and put multiple in there to clarify. And is That's that true. for uh, is that for like highly available environments or different regions yep. or something? And yeah. Just around Robin just picks whichever one it. Results wants. first, yeah, sure. Yeah, that, that's correct. So that that's where it gives you that high availability or scalability. Yeah. Um, what I'd strongly suggest, though, don't say, "Well, I'm going to add multiple certificate authorities to have my high low availability." That just adds a whole heap of complexity to your environment. Have one CA with multiple lenders and have a, um, a a level of availability on your certificate authority. Yep. Um, that mirrors its requirements. Cool. So I'm just going to quickly double check to make sure I'm actually in that group. I should be. Um, let's make sure, let's have a quick look on this computer to see who I'm actually set up as. Who am I slash UPN? So it's just Stephen, perfect. Uh, and if we're going to go here, intune.trainingusers. And we go to members. And I'm in there. Perfect. So now we go back to our uh, devices and we're going to quickly look at our device that we're using here today, which is uh, V8. And we've selected that on the list. And the next step is that we're just going to quickly sync the policy and keep mashing that sync until it uh, updates the policy. So if we go to device configuration, what we should see here eventually is if we go, uh, you'll see we've already got the root certificate on there. So if I go uh, cert uh, uh, mgr.msc and we go to trusted root, we go here and we have sure. our Intune training CA. So we've got our certificate, our root certificates being deployed successfully. Nice. And if we go in here, we actually have our certificate that's been issued correctly. And you'll see on here, if we go to details and we go to our enhanced very usage, quick. that was very quick. Um, and you will see that that's there. And just to show that there's no smoke and mirrors, if we go to our CA, hit cancel on that. Um, we go issued certificates. You'll see it was issued by SVC uh, at 11.14. That's not right. Refresh that. No, it's there. Interesting. Um, so it issued it at it issued it ten minutes ago. That's not right. There's a time wrong somewhere. Mm. Uh, but what we can do on the server it's so on the Intune portal is if we go to device configuration uh, and we go cert skip. It's still saying that it's pending because it hasn't processed it. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. That's, you're a bit bold thinking that the report was going to be there immediately. Um, it's pretty quick normally. Sure, but it's not that quick. True. Uh, and if we go uh, so 
There we go, skip. So there's a couple of things additional that you get on that SCEP and PKCS certificate. When you select the profile itself, mm -hmm. you'll see now a certificate option here, and it will go and check to see if the certificate's been successfully generated or not. Yeah, cool. Uh, and you'll see here it has, and it's not revoked. Uh, issuance is unknown because it hasn't processed it, and you can see the last certificate issued was at 11.24 on this computer, which was two minutes ago. Yeah, and you see all the information about that, uh, and what we should be able to do, I think, if it once it successfully issues, is you should be able to select it and then go revoke. Yeah, right. And and again, that's new. That's not something that I've ever seen. Yeah, yeah that's really cool. Yeah, and you can see all the extended usage and everything associated. So that's the numbers that we put in the field. You can see the serial number of the certificate, key usage, everything that you want to know about it, uh, where it was issued from. So. If in the scenario you have multiple CAs that are issuing certificates, you can see which certificate authority has issued it. That's awesome. Yep. Cool. So I think that covers off the Windows uh, posh, port, uh, portion. Portion. I, uh, I totally agree. So, okay, that was really e I hope everyone realizes how easy that was. Um, you know, the, deploying the certificates once the back end is actually all created. It's very, very simple. Um, so, yeah, I, I think that's a perfect time to sort of wrap this up. Yeah. Um, and there you go. Succeeded. Happy days. Let's, okay, let's not wrap it up. Let's, are we going to get that information? Probably not. It's probably going to take a little while to actually come through. Yep. So, if we go to configuration profiles, I'm just going to search, sort again to go to certs. We go to skip. And it still hasn't processed here. Yeah, that's going to take a hot minute. Yeah. There you go. Success. E. Can you drill into that? Quick. Now it just goes back to that computer, but doesn't give us any more information. Oh, sure, sure. But sure. if we go back over here to our certificates, what we should see under issuance uh, is in that. So not saying that. Yeah, it's still taking a while. So this, I mean, this just comes back down to the reportability not being um, as immediate as the actual policy. Um, so. You know, I've, I've always said that these sort of scenarios, uh, are, like the, the reportability is less important than actually deploying the solution. You know, that's done. It's done. If yep. we wait, if we had the magic of being able to pause our video and come back to this. Which uh, we're not going to today. Which we're not going to. Um, uh, we'd actually be able to see this sort of stuff. So, you know, being able to revoke the certificate is never something that you want to do three seconds after deploying it. But, no. you know, functionally it's there um, and we may, we may come back and have a look at this at a later date. But... Uh, Hopefully everyone realizes how easy that is. Um, yep. And again, if you've got any questions, leave them in the comments below. Um, we'll leave we'll leave links in the description uh, for all of the stuff, especially uh, Niehaus's blog on this stuff because I think that's great. Yep. Um, but otherwise, if you're doing device deviates, you just you're following the same exact same process, except just change the template to say device, device. instead of user, and then fill yep. out the other follow exactly. fill out the other variables in there. That's exactly. whatever, you, whatever you call them, and it's the same thing. That's it. Awesome. Perfect. Okay. Well, so that's that was Windows uh, uh, SCEP enrollment, uh, certificate deployment and enrollment. Um, so the next uh, couple of videos we're going to do are on Android, uh, uh, iOS, and Mac OS. Correct. Uh, so stick around for those, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Awesome. Thank you. Cheers. Sure.